for joining me again. Today, I'm gonna be geeking out on an absolute piece of British artwork. This is the 2011 Aston Martin DBS. When Aston Martin set out to design this iconic piece of hardware, they started with the DB9. They started with the VH platform, which is the uh, undercarriage that the, all of their sports cars are on. This one is about 25 millimeters lower and 40 millimeters wider. The lines on this car are just absolutely fantastic. It looks like it would just slide right through the air. Nothing on it really seems to be a, a hindrance to airflow, and it's just gorgeous design all the way around. Of course, to complement that, it's got a pretty impressive drivetrain. Let's check out the engine. Let's see what this beauty has under the hood. First off, I should mention that the hood is extremely light. It doesn't look like it from the top because of the beautiful finish, but it is carbon fiber to save weight. Now our engine here is a 6 liter V12. This thing puts out 510 horsepower. That's a bit of a step up from the DB9, which was at about 490 horsepower, I believe. You'll notice that the engine is very far back, and that's because the transaxle actually, actually places the transmission in the rear, which allows them to put the engine further back to better distribute the weight. A great decision on their part. It's a beautiful engine. Here's a detail I particularly enjoy from these cars. Inside the exhaust is a little ring of drilled steel. I mean, I'm not sure which metal it is, but it's drilled and it's pretty. It doesn't really do much, but it's pretty. I really like that. These carbon fiber door handles are smooth to the door. And you can hear the window move as you open up the handle. I've taken a panoramic 360 degree interactive video of the interior of this vehicle so you can watch it and it feels like you're sitting in the car you can actually look around at different angles be sure to click click the link in the description or the link that pops up in an annotation to check that out you watch it on your phone you move it around and you can see all the details it's pretty cool the inside of this car is fantastic it's cozy it's spacious the alcantara on the steering wheel feels warm to the touch and very comfy the center console here is reflective, which some people like and some people don't. I think it's all right. You have glass accents on the front of the buttons. And the way you start the car with this beautiful feeling key is to slide it in this thing they call the emotion engine. It's not an ignition anymore, it's just the emotion engine. You slide it in there, you push it, and it starts up. And this key feels he hefty, especially thanks to this big chunk of glass on top. And it's gorgeous. But here's an interesting fact. Even though you have this hefty key and glass on the actual buttons themselves that has a considerable weight addition, they've spared no, no expense in, in reducing the weight of the vehicle all around. You have carbon fiber everywhere, even where you can't see it, uh, such as the hood that's been finished and it's all over in the doors. Even the carpet in this car is a special weave to be low weight. So why would a company choose to do low weight everything but go with things like heavy glass and a heavy key? Well, I mean, those aren't gonna add a whole lot of weight to the car, but you also have to consider your experience driving it. You touch this, you feel this, and you don't want it to feel light and cheap. Your carpet, your shoes touch, and you won't feel a difference between putting your foot, your shoe, on a lightweight carpet and a regular carpet. There are some other decisions they made that I find especially interesting. They pride themselves on the fact that they use the golden ratio wherever possible. Now the golden ratio is a bit difficult to explain, but it's a common ratio in design that's supposed to be very pleasing to the eye. You have one section, another section that's 1.6 times larger, and if you combine the two, that's 1.6 times larger than the second look it up if you need more details, but it's called the golden ratio. And if you look up Aston Martin, they brag a lot about using it. For example, from the front bumper to here, the back of the front wheel divided here is the golden ratio. Now I'm not gonna measure it to confirm, but it's all over the car. From the top of the windshield, split at the hood to the front of the hood. 
is the golden ratio. Even this little guy split right here to right here is the golden ratio. And it goes on all the way around the car from the back bumper tip to the front of the rear wheel split right here is the golden ratio. From the center of the rear wheel to the front of the door split at the door jam is the golden ratio. It's an interesting concept. I want to give a special thanks to Premier Sports Cars for letting me come in here and geek out on these amazing machines. This is not a museum, it's a business. People can't just walk in off the street and gawk at these cars, so I appreciate them being patient with me while I film. If you'd like to see some more explorations of unique and exotic cars, be sure to subscribe for more.